Okay, we are going to talk about uh, a new technique in facial skin resurfacing called portrait plasma regeneration. So what is plasma? Essentially plasma is ionized gas. So it's a nitrogen gas which is a inert gas that gets excited by ultra high frequency and that ultra high frequency bombards the skin in a non-contact way in order to regenerate the skin. Now that won't be entirely clear until we progress but that's the basic modality the way it, it, that it's used. What I would like to do before we continue with this is sort of give you a perspective of where I see plasma resurfacing is. 13, 14 years ago we had the carbon dioxide laser that came out very aggressive led to progressive loss of skin color or hypopigmentation prolonged recovery times redness that lasted a long time literally burned off the skin most people can't tolerate that and it's also unsafe for people of color when I started my practice after a lot of training with the CO2 I moved to the chemical peel but the peel only provides more of a superficial treatment unless you're doing something aggressive like phenol which obviously has its problems too so how does this work as I said it's a non-contact device it's not touching the skin and that nitrogen gas makes contact with the skin to create the energy changes that are necessary in order to rejuvenate the skin so I really see plasma as providing closer to what CO2 does with a recovery very similar to a say 35 percent trichloroacetic acid or TCA peel. The other great thing about this plasma device is that it has non, it's a non-chromophore dependent procedure. It doesn't, you don't have to worry about a certain color in the skin. All lasers are chromophore dependent by, by their very nature and this is not a laser. This is not even a light device, it's a plasma device. So it's non-chromophore dependent and there's a full range of jewel settings that we use low settings and high settings depending on the recovery and the skin color that and the desired uh, changes that you want and we're going to go through each of those settings in a moment so how does this work this slide helps you understand basically how plasma works there are two zones one is a zone of thermal damage that is like CO2 or the peel where it's taking all that outer dead layer skin away and that you see an immediate improvement in. The zone of thermal modification is the area where the heat of the nitrogen gas affects a collagen remodeling that in my opinion takes about four to six months to see that change and it's progressive so that up to a year you're still seeing positive changes in the skin that is what I think you're missing in some of the, the more superficial or medium depth chemical peels. So what happens here? What is so special about plasma? Well, a few things. Just like a chemical peel, the outer skin stays intact. You don't burn it off. It stays intact at the high settings. At the low settings, it never comes off. But at the high settings, it stays intact for about three to four days. The reason that's so great is that you don't have the burning discomfort that you do with CO2 laser because the skin is still intact. It also expedites the healing so within a seven day period your new skin is formed and you're already pretty close to being healed maybe a light pinkness that's there. So that's what's important about this wound response without a wound. You don't have an open wound maybe only for a couple days and there's really no discomfort compared to like CO2. So this is the device right here, a picture of the device, and you can see on the right side the plasma gas coming forward, and that's the handpiece in full view on the bottom right. And there is a nitrogen gas cylinder on the back that works with this, that needs to be replaced, uh, along with handpieces that you need to change out. So here's some histological slides to show you what's going on. There is a vacuolation of, or emptying if you will, uh, of the basal epidermal cells and that vacuolation is very important and I'm going to talk about how that's important at the high settings in a few slides from now. So you can see here 
that even at that line of cleavage, that there is the old skin still intact. And the lower skin with the new stratum corneum is already beginning to form below it. So what's great about that is you have that biologic dressing, that dressing that stays intact for a few days at the high setting. And now you can see a full regeneration at day 10 all the way up through the epidermis with the higher setting of PSR 3 here. We'll talk about those settings in a moment. So you can see at day 10 there's a lot of histologic changes at the dermal layer. So what settings are available? Okay, this is meant to make it easy for you. The best way for you to think about it, there's a high and a low setting. I would say in Fitzpatrick 4's Hispanic darker skin patients, unless you're dealing with Mediterranean or, or, Caucasian, or lighter skin Caucasian patients, I would recommend that you go with the lower setting. That's a PSR 1. That is an incremental setting around 1, 1 1.3, 1 1.5 joules that you perform in the office really with no sedation. A little an topical anesthesia is all you need and the patient feels very good. But it, and the skin doesn't fall away. It just becomes stripy for a few days. And that will last a recovery about three to four days and you need to do that about three times. At the high settings, PSR2 and PSR3, you're basically around three to four joules. And that provides the old skin falling away and true deeper rejuvenation. And I'll show you some of those results in a moment. The difference between a PSR2 and a PSR3, which I will explain more in detail in a moment, is whether you do a single pass, and the PSR3 involves going back a second pass to those deep wrinkles and deep right -ins. That's essentially the difference. If you ask, well, what happened to the two joules and the 2.5, what happened to all that? They've shown that at the medium settings, you get the recovery of a three to four joule setting with none of the, re none of the benefits. So you either go high or you go low. You really shouldn't go between the two. So here's this express, I, I, this is very new to me. I, I, the express is extremely low settings where there's really no recovery. But this is brand new and I don't have any experience with it so I don't want to get into the, what express is but it's basically below a joule. And the idea is that you go through multiple treatments but you have literally no recovery. But with the PSR1, the low setting, you go through a little bit of recovery of three to four days where the old skin always stays intact, just becomes a little stripy and a little bit darker for a few days. And remember the PSR2 is the high setting with a single pass. And you can see the, the results are not equal to CO2. But with all the negatives of CO2, I think there's a safety level with the plasma that affords you a great re rejuvenation, maybe not to the level of CO2, but without the risk and downtime associated with CO2. Okay, let's talk about PSR3. That is at very high settings, the, that 3.54 joules, with that added pass, where that if you got those deep perioral regards and wrinkles, you'll go back and treat it one more time. That's PSR3. It's basically PSR2 with an added pass over the wrinkles or over the whole face. Now, I think that's a little aggressive. I, I usually do a hybrid PSR2-3 in which I do a single pass high setting for the face and I'll come back selectively and add another pass over the deeper wrinkles. This is that vacuolation I talked about earlier, why it's so important. The cells literally become debris in that area where the first pass goes. But because there's a Gaussian distribution of energy, there's areas that are missed, so to speak. Now even if you miss it, the collagen is still remodeling. But if you want maximal changes there, you can double pass again and the areas where you pass before are safe because they're protected with evacuation. You can't go hit that again. And that's what you're seeing here. I hope that's not too confusing. If it is, you can ask me afterwards. Um, at the low settings, there is no evacuation at PSR1, meaning do not double pass at low settings. You can cause a problem. In fact, what I usually recommend as you're doing this treatment is not to snake back and forth, but go row after 